yeah, this guy did a really good job. This feels so much better, especially with the heat. Alright, so I just had breakfast this morning at a traditional Bahraini place. This place is called uh, Tawawish. And yeah, not too bad. I had the local dish, um, they call it balalit, which is sort of like, um, it's kind of like a spaghetti vermicelli type thing, cooked in saffron and cardamom. A little bit sweet, topped with an egg, and I had that with karak chai, of course. And the whole thing came to one dinar exactly, which ain't bad at all. And it is a traditional place. It's not like one of you know. It's, it's like proper you know local Gulf Arabic food. So yeah, not bad at all. So this being my second day, full day in Bahrain, and there's a nice breeze going on here. It's all right. But I'll tell you something, yeah. When you're in the hot part. I'm sweating down to my nutsack. Just gonna say uh, that sounds gross, yeah, but I'm sweating. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So I've just been to this discount store over there, which will I'm, I've done a whole other video on it. Please don't forget to catch it when it's uploaded. But like, yeah, it's kind of cool. I'm in kind of like an industrial harbor kind of area. A bit away from like the center just wanted to have a look down here crazy thing is right if i want to get to the actual coastline itself it's another almost like mile walk in that direction and i don't think i want to do it right now i think i'd rather wait till the evening to do that because it's just too hot and it's gonna get hotter i mean it's only i don't think it's it's like 9 10 a.m another couple of hours yeah i ain't even gonna be able to be outside yeah. And I think over here what I've just stumbled on is the local bus station. Like kind of a bus terminal because you know you got buses here and you got the stands. Don't know where they're going, but I do actually need a bus to the airport tomorrow, so it might be a good idea to ask which one's going. And as y'all can see, because uh, I'm out of the shade again, you see how red I'm getting, right? I'm stood basically in the direct the direct direction of the sun you know you can see how red i'm really getting right now i need to cross the street and get into the shade it is getting quite oppressive actually like don't get me wrong i enjoy the heat i really enjoy the heat but i just don't want to like drop in this heat or faint due to exhaustion you know so anyway i'm gonna like get back into the shaded area that'd be the better option Oy. It creeps up on you, you know. You don't realize how hot you are until you just feel really fatigued. I mean, I'm drinking plenty, but I think I probably need to drink just a little bit more. But also being in the direct, the direct, you know, line of the sun, that's not good neither. It's too much vitamin D. It proper makes me wonder how like construction workers and laborers manage to do this job like out in the sun. You know, in the Middle East, because, you know, like, you know, when they were building, like, the stadium in Qatar, like, there's quite a lot of deaths from ex exhaustion, you know. I mean, I don't want to criticize anyone. I'm just saying facts, you know. It's like, if you don't, if you don't watch what you're doing, you know, it can creep up on you fast. But, yeah, I'm going to head back to where I came from for a little bit, back to the hotel. I need to just charge my battery a bit. To be honest, I think I really need to invest in like a good power bank or something because it's getting a bit, I don't know, like it's a bit tiresome having to keep going and charging my phone. So let me show you all something here. I've just been in the shop, right? I don't know if you've ever seen these before, yeah? Pokari Sweat. It's a Japanese like sports energy drink, uh, but you get these all over Asia, all over the Middle East, and they're actually amazing. Like, do you know in Japan, they have these in hospitals for people with dehydration or with diarrhea and stuff. And you know what, you know when you're really low on electrolytes, these are amazing. But yeah, anyway, like, you know, these. Yeah, really good, really good. And they got like a kind of um, grapefruit kind of taste to them. It's, some people say it's citrus, like, well, grapefruit is a citrus, but some people think it's like a lemon taste, but I would say it's more like grapefruit. 
But yeah, I mean, if you're ever in the Middle East or even Southeast Asia, yeah, if you're feeling a bit run down because of heat or anything like that, get these. They're, they're just really good, you know? Hey, yo, so just behind me is like a gold mall. I think I showed you guys this yesterday, yeah. So I will, like, get tongue tied. But yeah, this gold mall just had a look at some gold prices because I do like to buy a couple of bars here and there just as I'm going. And they're not bad, seems quite competitive, but I won't know until I actually change it into pounds, you know, just to get if the rate's okay. I know it's going to be cheaper than London, of course, though. But that's one also other thing about coming Middle East. If you're here and you're interested in gold, this is the place to be for it. But coming down here, it looks like I've stumbled into like the electronics district because I'm seeing like loads of phone shops and gadget shops, stuff like that. Might have to have a look actually. I could do with a gimbal or something. Better than just holding my phone in my hand. So right behind me here, you've got like the Bab al Bahrain market and everything, like Masuk in there. I might go take a look in a bit, see, what, see what's going on. Hey yo, so now I'm deep in the market here, yeah, in Old Manama. And in here it's actually really, it's quite tight you know, but at the same time it's a good thing because it's really hot. I mean it's midday, maybe I'm crazy for going out on midday, but I've got to do something, I'm only here for another day. But luckily in this area it's quite covered so it's not as hot as like in the sun. But if I go show you, yeah, there's so much stuff, like it's just wall to wall, you know, all the clothes, the spices back there. Say that I did just go in one shop and the guy was trying to kind of put, he was trying to push something onto me. He called it Bahraini spice and I was asking him, what do I do with it? I like to cook, don't get me wrong, if I know what to do with it, I'll be happy to buy it. Because I like to, yeah, I collect spices, I like cooking, so I don't mind. But the guy couldn't explain what I'm meant to do with it. He was just trying to make me buy loads of it. Like, he's like, oh, get a kilo, get half a kilo. I'm like, I don't need that much. I'll never use it. Anyway, I just kind of learned a valuable lesson, you know. I was doing a bit of filming and I managed, I caught like a police jeep in my shop and they saw me. And basically they told me to delete the footage, but I totally respect that, you know, you know, when it comes to national security and stuff, you have to be mindful of what you're filming. Because obviously, you know, in the public domain, anyone could watch these videos and it can be used for any reason. So, you know, tip to other YouTubers, if you're in certain countries, just don't film, you know, police or military stuff, you know, because, you know, it can ruffle a few feathers, but they were very nice about it. I mean... You know, they were very polite and I just deleted it and I even got another subscriber, you know, they were very cool. But one thing I wanted to touch upon, where I'm at right now behind me, there was a huge fire just a few weeks ago in that vicinity and it destroyed like 25 shops. You know, that's really sad for the people involved. I mean, I think three lives were lost and quite a few injured. And, you know, I, I walked down the main street just where I was and you can see like, you know, the shops are completely burned out and gutted, you know. Talking of, like, millions of pounds worth of stuff just burnt to a crisp, you know. It's really sad. But, you know, it is what it is, you know. But I just wanted to sort of touch on that a little bit. Because I, I passed it yesterday. I was wondering what happened. So I looked through Google at the news and found out what happened. And, yeah, it's really sad, you know. But I tell you, so, but one good thing. One, I'm getting to see the market. And two... Being under this shade, it does provide quite a bit of respite from the sun because it's it's brutal, you know. When you're in the direct sun in the street, you're getting burned. Like, I'm red. <laughs> I mean, I know I shouldn't be out in midday, but what else am I going to do rather than just sit in my room, you know? It was really nice to see it anyway. It's, it's a really cool place. And to be honest, I never knew that Bahrain or even Manama was like this before I came. I expected... Bahrain to be like kind of another version of Dubai or Qatar but as I've said before it's actually a lot more traditional you know there's like life just seems to go on like normal here it's not got like a facade or a fakeness to it like it's not artificial like here it feels proper kind of genuine you know 
हमारे घर के दस किलो ये इधर तुम्हारे वो बोला भाई फारूक हम उसको पूछा भाई हम दो Anyway, I managed to get me some Bahraini spice while I was in that shop. The guy was very nice, entertaining, you know, and he actually explained to me what the spice is for, which the other guy didn't. But at least now I actually know what it's for, you know. But anyway, let me show you this. Yeah, this is Bahraini spice, and they use it for either kebabs or the local version of biryani that they call majbus. So, as I like to cook, I've got myself about 200 grams of this. It may be a bit much, but I'll try to use it as best as I can. But yeah, it smells pretty good. It's not so so spicy, but the local Bahrainis don't use heavy chilies or anything. They they tend to have their food a bit more savory rather than super spicy, you know. But yeah, here it is, and it only cost me 500 fills, which is like one pound. For all that. that, that's a steal, you know. That's a really good deal. But anyway, I'm going to carry on going a bit south because I want to go to Lulu Hypermarket. Like, I want to kind of have a look around there again before I leave Bahrain. And just behind me, here, there's like a halwa sweet shop, yeah. And I don't know if you just saw, yeah, those jalebis. Like usually jalebis in England are usually only orange color, yeah, but those are like red and yellow. They look really inviting. It's kind of cool, you know. But anyway, we're getting out of the market now, yeah, back onto sort of the normal streets. Like I think this all behind me, like to this way and this way all behind me, I think that's like the market area, like the proper market. But now coming out of there, I'm coming back onto the main, like sort of normal streets again. Just gotta be careful with these cars. I also like that Middle East, you always got these independent trading shops. It's not all sort of big chains and stuff here, you know? But yeah, as you see behind me, it's really congested, like, you know, it's barely any room to walk, you know? I mean, it's a good thing and a bad thing, you know, these streets, they're pretty good, you know, they're like kind of, it's traditional, you know, but, just really tight for cars to get down so you're always having to watch out but let me tell you something right now yeah where i am yeah the air is so hot that it, i can feel it in my nose the heat you know it's like i'm literally breathing hot air at the moment <laughs> and i know that at some point i may get sunburned i just hope it's not too i just hope it's not too drastic you know i don't want to end up peeling Yo, let me tell you something, yeah, this heat is really bad, like really oppressive, you know. I just took refuge in this masjid, which is a good thing. I managed to actually make up my afternoon prayers, both of them, because I'm a Musafir, I'm traveling about, so I can shorten them and do both of them together. But oh, it was a good excuse to actually just get in there because it's nicely air conditioned. But out here, it's insanely hot. No word of lie, I kid you not. Like, I'm back out here at the moment, but I need to be really careful. Like, not overdo it all. I will walk really slowly and just try to stay in the shade because for a bit, I was starting to, like, fade out. It's that hot out here right now. Like, you can see the sun beaming off my face. But it's what it is. I did decide to come in summer after all. What I've noticed is though is round here it seems to be like a like a sort of Pakistani Bangladeshi neighborhood that like I'm noticing all the restaurants and the food and the people really. But yeah it's kinda cool you know. Might get some food while I'm here. Really nice guy. It is, it is. I'm just admiring it, you know. But yeah, this guy did a really good job. Oh, I like it, I like it. Anyways, I just got my hair cut, as you can see. This feels so much better, especially with the heat. I just, that, all that hair I had was just heavy on my head. Oh, this place was really good. Like, the guy was cool. And get this, yeah, it cost me one dinar. One dinar, you know, that's like two pounds. In London, yeah, this would have cost me about between 10 and 15 for the service I got, you know. Bahrain's great, I'm telling you. 
it's like you come like people think the Middle East is expensive like in the Gulf and it's not you know it's like so far I've become really surprised about how easy things are in Bahrain like I've had a really good time you know, I managed to get everything done I got my hair cut I even got some slippers today got everything you know so yeah like I'm really happy with it so far So anyway, you know what I was saying before, yeah? Where I said that I had something like like 12 dinars budget, yeah? For the rest of these days, yeah? I'm still not through it yet. And you know what I've spent, yeah? I bought a new pair of sandals, bought a fridge magnet, got my hair cut. I've had several meals. I even managed to buy some Bahraini spice. And I've still got money left over and I'm going tomorrow, you know? So yeah, I've really stuck with it. It's, it's crazy, like I was saying before, yeah, but one dinar seems to go quite far in this country. Like, you know, when I got, originally when I checked in the hotel, yeah, they gave me all my change of one dinar notes. And I said that basically, yeah, I mean, how much can one of those notes get me? It turns out quite a lot. It's kind of occurred to me, yeah, but where I am right now, maybe the ghetto. I don't know, or maybe it's just like a business area, I don't know, but like... I mean, it's not dangerous in any way, but it seems to be a bit more, you know, not run down, just a bit jumbled up. But I really need to get out of this heat. I keep stepping in these side streets thinking that it's gonna shade me, and it's not. Anyway, I'm getting the banana leaf, for the set, yeah. I haven't had this since I was in Malaysia. This is amazing. I can't believe I found this place. I like this kind of rice, actually, it's really good. Healthy as well. So yeah, now I've done basic, like, I've totally, like, finished them up. And only one thing left to do now is... Over, and that's it. Perfect. So yeah, as you can see, I just had the, like, banana leaf fish set, yeah? And it was amazing. I've not had that in like four years, like since I was living in Malaysia, you know? And that's the place behind me, uh, Al Razak restaurant, right there. And yeah, you know how much it cost? 800, 800 fills, yeah? That's like one pound, one pound 70. One pound, yeah, like one pound 70 for all that. This country just doesn't cease to amaze me. And it's cheap, but it's not cheap in quality. You know, it's very high quality. It's just really cheap in price. I'm, I don't know, Bahrain has really exceeded my expectations a lot, you know. Like you really do get bang for your buck here. You get so much for very little money. I'm, I'm quite surprised by it, especially food wise. <clears throat> Every meal I've had so far in this country <clears throat> has been below one Bahraini dinar or two pound, you know? Every meal I've had so far. And they've been good meals. It's not like I've been eating street food or anything, you know, l l of low quality. I've been eating really, really well. It just, it, it astounds me, you know? It's amazing. Like, it, I was expecting here to be like quite expensive, you know, when I arrived, but it's quite the opposite 
So here's something just behind me. If you're curious about how much it is to rent rooms here, you know, say if you want to stay here for a few months, behind me, a room for rent is 120 um, dinars. That's like just shy of, just short of 250 quid. 250 quid a month. That's not bad at all for, you know, the Gulf, you know? That's all right. I don't know how much that same room would be in Abu Dhabi. I think it'd be quite a bit more. But that's not bad at all. Hey, oh, just ahead, I've just seen Nesto. I didn't even know they had that here. That's also another big chain of supermarkets in the Middle East. It's kind of like Lulu, but I don't know if it's a bit cheaper or not. But, yeah, there it is. Yeah, Nesto. Last time I went there was when I was in Dubai, funnily enough. Anyway, I had a little bit of luck in that Nesto, yeah, but to be honest, the selection wasn't really up to what I wanted. So I'm going to make my way to Lulu. But I just looked on the map and it's about half a mile from here. I'm going to walk it though, but I'm going to do it by going through these here back streets because there is a main road, but I just went on that main road and the sun's pointing directly on it. And if I walk on that road for more than 100 meters, I'm going to get baked. Like, I'll just burn to a crisp. It's absolutely roasting. I mean, you can see in the background, the main road's in the distance, and it's just absolutely baking right now. So I'm gonna do all these little side streets to get there and navigate my way that way, if I can do it, that is. You know, because at least with the side streets, you got a bit of shade. And also, it's quite scenic as well, you know? It looks kind of cool. And I keep repeating myself and saying that, but yeah. But so far, being in Bahrain, it's been kind of awesome, you know? It's like, you know, I've never been here in my life. Never been to Bahrain, you know, in my 38 years of life. But for some reason, I feel like it's a very familiar place. It's, it's strangely feels at home, you know? I don't feel weird about being here and there's nothing alien about here as such, you know, because I've, you know, I grew up with Asians, I grew up with Bengalis, and there's like a million of them here, so that's cool. Indian food, I've been eating that since I was a kid, and there's an abundance of that here too. And, you know, even, you know, my, my father lives in Tunisia, that's an Arabic country, so, you know, I go see him whenever I can. So, yeah, it's weird, it's like Arabic countries, or, you know, Middle Eastern countries have got this kind of, how can I say, they've got this uniformity about them a little bit. They're each different in their own way, their own dialects and whatnot, but they're all kind of similar as well. But the one thing I do say, I feel comfortable here, you know, I feel like, it's like just easy going. I don't feel the stresses here that I do when I'm in London. London seems to be a very highly pressured place. You know, actually most of the UK, because the main problem is in the UK, if you're not in a big city, and if you haven't got a decent job in the small town, then you're nothing, you know? You just basically exist, living hand to mouth. But when you live in the city, you got all the expenses and the rent, and also the crime and everything else to go with it. So, I don't know, it's like in the UK, I personally, don't feel like I can live a normal life and also save money at the same time. I feel like I have to choose one or the other to get by or to get up in life. Living a normal life where I get everything I want, get married, start a family, rest of it, live in my own house apart instead of a shared room, it ain't gonna happen in the UK, it really ain't. But at the same time, I just feel the quality of life just isn't there, you know? Here, I just feel it's really easy going. Like, a lot of Middle Eastern countries, I mean, if I could get a work permit or a job or something, I'd be quite happy whiling away my days here, you know? That's just me. I mean, a lot of people would think I'm mad, but maybe I am. I'm just wired differently, you know? And, like... It's not that I want to hate on my own country. I really don't. You know, it's my country. I was born there. I was born in England, you know. I want to... I keep trying to find something I like about England. And there are a few things I do like. A lot of things I like. But at the same time, 
there's a lot of things that also just grate away at me. I mean, we've just had the general election and Labour's come back into power. I just hope they do a good job. I hope they fix some of the stuff, that, you know, I hope they fix the Conservatives' mess because, you know, Conservatives have just left the UK an absolute shambles. It, it's ridiculous, you know. So I hope that Labour could come and fix some of this. And obviously, like, as Brits, we have to do our part as well. It's not just the government alone that can fix it, you know. We have to, we have to figure our own selves out as well. But, you know, it's like... Like I said, when I'm travelling, I always get this sort of grass is greener feeling. And I always want to move elsewhere. But it's not that I don't want to like my country. I really want... I want to like something about Britain. You know, it's the only country i got. I'm a British citizen. Well, I'm born English, so I should like something about my country. It's just that just successive governments and policies and everything, it's just left me just feeling kind of disappointed, you know? And it's not like I haven't tried to make a go of it. I mean, I think I've done all right. I managed to move to London. I managed to, you know, kind of get myself in a good situation. But I also feel like I've hit a wall. I feel like I can only go so far and that's it. And I've tried to advance myself and, you know, it's always been something like a spanner in the works. You know, either government incompetence or just pure stupidity and the bureaucracy as well. It just, it's just so irritating, you know, which is why, why I kind of leave the UK now and again. I go to other places just so I can get some perspective, you know. So, yeah. So my quest to try and avoid the sun and go through back streets, which I'm doing a really bad job of at the moment because I'm literally getting baked here. I keep standing on the wrong side of the street or something like that. Maybe I should get a hat. Maybe, I'm not really a hat person, but maybe I need one. But so far, I'm getting there. I'm making headway. I'm having to kind of go the long way around to get to where I want to be just to avoid the main road. But, oh well, it's been fun anyway. Seems I've stumbled into like a hardcore Shia neighborhood now. Because you can see all the black flags and everything. They're getting ready for a Shura. Oh, and you know what? I've struck gold because I've got a really shaded street. This is nice. There's actually a breeze right now. It's quite soothing. It's not, the temperature hasn't gone down so, so much, but this little breeze has just provided a bit of relief. This is just where I needed to be. I just needed to get out of the direction of the sun, you know? But, yeah, I could just wander around here all day, you know. I mean, maybe I should get inside, but what's the fun in that? My mission is nearly complete. I can see Lulu in the distance right there. Oh, my God, I thought I'd never get there. Took me ages, but I finally made it. Just another 100 metres to go. Oh, that's a relief. I'm going to go inside and like bask in the air conditioning for a while. Anyway, awesome. All right, so shopping challenge complete. I'm leaving the store now. You can hear the blowers and everything. Oh my God, it's hot again, yeah? And guess what? I came way under budget. Well, not way under budget. I set myself a budget of two dinners and it came to 1.85, So yeah, I got all that for about four pounds. That's not bad at all. Two dinars, yeah? So, like I was saying, one dinar in Bahrain goes quite a long way, you know? All right, anyway, mission to Lulu complete. Did my challenge. You'll see it in the video coming up. It'll be in a separate video, of course. But I'm heading back to my room because I'm absolutely roasted. I look like a lobster right now. <laughs> You know, you know, in like movies or in um, scenes where it says it is at this moment that he realized that he effed up. I'm having one of those moments right now because my back of my neck, my face, you know, I am a redneck in the true definition of the word right now. I'm absolutely, you know, I'm red. I'm red. This is going to hurt later. I, this is probably going to really hurt later, you know, I'm not even going to be able to turn my head because 
I think I'm going to be a bit crispy, you know. But, you know, it's what it's the price you pay here for basking in the sun. I really should have got some sun cream, I'm sure of that. And ironically enough, now that I'm actually heading back to my room, the sun's actually going down a bit. It's not nearly as strong as it was. You know, it's getting towards the afternoon now. So the time where I probably should have stayed inside, I was out. And the time when I could go out, I'm about to go back. Oh well, my mom always said I used to do things the hard way. <laughs> yes, it's still true. All right, so I'm nearly at the room now. My hotel is in my eyesight, I can see it. It's been really fun. It's been very hot and I'm burnt to a crisp, but I don't regret it one little bit. Oh my God, have some patience, will you? Messing with my video. But anyway, I'm gonna go inside because this lobster needs to be put on ice. Peace out.